What's up, wild animals? I'm Melanie Vesey, and welcome to another promotional rescue talk show. I'm a stand-up comedian, actress, and filmmaker, and if you want to see any of my work, my stand-up comedy special, my movies, you can do that over at MelanieVesey.com. But I'm also a promotions consultant with my own company called Promotional Rescue, where I teach people how to promote themselves without feeling gross. And if you want to know more about my services, who I work with, what I do, you can get all that information at PromotionalRescue.com. But on this show, I talk with people about how they promote themselves and their projects, uh, how they deal with an audience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because this is such an important component about being in this business we call show. Uh, and the first part of this, uh, this talk show is available for free on my Instagram, on my YouTube, uh, you can watch it on Comedy Hub uh, every Wednesday at noon. But I have more in-depth conversations, and that information is available on my Patreon. Uh, and you can get the full audio and the full video of these conversations and the bonus material. And believe me, those conversations are pretty juicy over on my Patreon. You can get that information at patreon.com slash Melanie Vesey. And all of your contributions help to make this show happen. Uh, and I appreciate all of your support. Believe me, no amount is too little or too great when you're donating uh, on uh, Patreon and also too to this podcast as well on other platforms. So on the show today, uh, I have the amazing Nate Hurd. Uh, he's a stand-up comedian. He's an actor. Uh, you may have seen him on American Horror Story or Marvel's Legion. He's also on My Name is Earl. He's also a fantastic stand-up comedian. Very, very funny. And um, the week just before we did this podcast, uh, this recording, uh, his TikTok crossed over a million followers. And even though Nate says that he struggles with doing some of this stuff, I was like, what? I, you connect with an audience in such a fantastic way. And we really did talk about how, it, and it seemed to be kind of like a thread through all of our conversations, how he connects to people's humanity and how he does that through his comedy, but also through his uh, TikToks through his videos. And it was such a fantastic conversation. And even when we went over to the Patreon side of it, he was talking about how, you know, nobody is above uh, getting, um, you know, trolled or getting hate on the internet. And I feel like having to deal with that part of dealing with an audience, and it seems to really take up a lot of energy in people's minds. And the reason why I have this company is because people see this really small part of the negative side of dealing with an audience, and it's almost like they're willing to let that completely eclipse all of the good stuff that comes along with dealing with an audience. And Nate talked about it, uh, you know, in the fact that he's connected with people that say, hey, you really inspired me and I was having a hard time or, wow, it's so nice to connect with somebody who understands what I'm going through. and how much that made makes him feel good and that it's worth those like weirdo, you know, sideways, whatever comments that we all get, uh, you know, on the internet. And so I really like, this is why I do this. This is why I normalize these conversations around self-promotion and around promoting ourselves because I feel like when I see people putting projects out into the world and they don't get their, it's full time in the sun, what that person start, uh, does sometimes is they start to take it personally. And I, I just know that sometimes things take a long time and it's sad for me to see people not reach their fullest potential. And so I don't want this promotion component um, to be a part of what stops somebody reaching their fullest potential. And whatever we talk about on this podcast uh, and on this talk show, all of this stuff can be applied to whatever you're doing, your business, your book, your movie, your Twitch channel, your comedy special, your shoe company. You're like, it, it's like, these are universal concepts and ideas um, that will help you no matter what. Because at the end of the day, what I talked about with, Ner with Nate was, was um, the fact that this is how, how what he does, it truly makes him happy. And that he connects then with an audience that is made happy by what he makes him happy. 
And that is it. I mean, if you're focused on, and we talked about this, if you're focused on just the followers, who they're doing and what they are and how to get them and all of that stuff, and not focusing on what is truly right with you, what you're truly in line with, you're not going to be able to sustain. So this is a really great conversation, and I really hope you enjoy it. So please definitely follow Nate Hurd at Nate Hurd Comedy on all of his platforms, also to his website. Check him out. He's a great talk. So enjoy the talk. Bye. Hey, Nate. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? It's so good. I'm so glad to have you here today. What's up? Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm so glad to chat with you. I know that last week you you had kind of like a a little bit of a milestone where you crossed over a million followers over on TikTok, which is congratulations. That's super exciting. Thank you. And I just took a little bit of a deep dive over on your TikTok and went through, uh, you know, about like 10 of your the, your last TikToks. You are so funny. Um, you do this so natural and you really have kind of like a range of stuff that you do. You know what I mean? You do stand up comedy and, you know, you've, of course, been on these amazing TV shows like American Horror Story, American Horror Story. My mouth isn't working yet. And uh, Marvel's Legion and stuff like that. But you really do seem to be able to connect with an audience. So, you know, and clearly everyone, you know, wants to watch your stuff and engage with you. So talk to me about that journey for you. Was that something that came easily or was that something you struggled with? Like, how was your promotional journey from like starting comedy and stuff like that? Like from starting comedy or starting specifically like the the TikTok stuff? Let's start with the like, let's start with from the beginning of comedy, because I feel like as a comedian, um, you know, we have our comedy aspect of it. But as comedians, we are asked so much to promote. You know what I mean? Get people to shows, whether we're doing bringer shows or not. You know what I mean? Whether we're putting stuff online, you know, hey, I want you to listen to my podcast. Like we have to do so much promotion around what we do. And was this something that you took to right away or you had reservations around it? Like, how did you feel about it? Um, Well, when I started comedy, I was kind of in that last class of comedians that really didn't have to do that a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, we didn't. It wasn't a thing that we really thought about. If, If you were funny, someone saw it and just was like, hey, come do my show. So there was no, there was no, uh, there was no bringers. They, they just didn't exist. And I, so I, I, I think I've maybe done two bringers in my entire life. I'm not hating on them. I mean, do you, but yeah. the problem that I had was, um, I don't got no friends <laughs> out here. Uh, and I would feel bad because every time, the two times that I did it, um, the same thing happened. I could the the comics on the shows were not I don't want to say they weren't funny but they were they were just so so new to comedy that there wasn't a lot of like they, they, you could tell like there was I remember I did the my second bringer ever was at the comedy store and I remember going there and I got my friends to go and they you know I, I had like three people to go and I needed five people and then the booker uh, was not going to let me go up. Oh. And then I was like, all right, fine, whatever, dog. Then I was like, then my people are going to leave. And he was like, no, no, no. I was like, well, you know. Um, so he was like, fine, you can go on. And then when I got off, my friends were like, man, you were really funny. I really liked the short guy and I really liked the cripple guy. And they were talking about two people who were also just put on this on the show from the store. Mm. They were talking about me and two store guys. Um, and then they were like, everybody else was terrible. And I was like, man, y'all spent like $80 yeah. to, to, to see bullshit. Like, yeah, I appreciate Like, how am I supposed to justify asking my friends to do that? That's a lot of money. No, I know. To, and I'm, and I don't want them to get bitter on stand up. I appreciate them coming out to help me, but the whole point of comedy for me was to make the crowd laugh. Like, yes. if you're not funny, I don't, if I'm not funny, I don't want you to laugh. Yes. That false information. So, so I don't like doing bringers because everybody is, it, there's like an agreement that 
nope, that it's bullshit. Like the, yes. the people are coming to see you, but they also aware that you've been doing this for six weeks. You're not going to be that funny. So people won't laugh at people that not that they didn't come to see mm. because those people are oftentimes not funny. So it's like it's an agreed bullshit and i and, and again no hate on the on the producers or any of the other comics man do your thing but like for me it defeats the whole purpose of me getting on stage i want the organic interaction and it's hard to do during a bringer also, oh my I god have, i i couldn't also, agree I more have. it is it is so challenging and for those of you watching that don't understand what a bringer show is so out here in california uh, uh you know uh or well, maybe it's maybe it's everywhere as well uh but it's everywhere yeah. So, and it's a very predatory, uh, and um, you know, you are asked to bring a certain amount of people to a comedy show, uh, and uh, and it it really like it's not like it's it matters how much how funny you are, which is very challenging. Um, and so the the response to your comedy can be very uh, up and down. Uh, and so. Um, and the room is essentially just to that somebody's making money off the room. And so and there's always new people in comedy. So there's always kind of like a fresh batch of people uh, for, you know, these bringer um, people to do. And I've totally done them in, in the early part of uh, comedy. And um, it, it, everybody does a couple of them. I don't know anybody who's ever not. You know what I mean? Everybody does a couple of them. They learn very quickly uh, that it is very challenging. It's not an ideal situation. Um, however, I do know that in at uh, with with doing comedy at all, it's like the clubs love it when you can bring a crowd. They they kind of they know that like that is what the clubs are there. So even, you know, somebody who's, you know, a Mark Marin or a Margaret Cho or someone like they have to bring put butts in seats. You know what I mean? So do that. But personally, I would rather people come because they like me rather mm. than I, I'm, I'm asking them to. Oh my God, no. And that's always like, and, and I always say this so much on this show, which is that even though I have a show about promotion, um, it I am not saying that that's the only uh, part of this pie. You know what I mean? Oh, you yeah, have no, that, to have, I mean, there's, there's a you lot have, to have the, the component um, because I'm, I'm more into attraction. I want people to be attracted to the situation. I don't want to have to beat them over the head to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want anybody to feel forced to do anything. That's, that's not a relationship with an audience. You know what I mean? And what I was saying too, about how natural I feel like you are at this, even though we were kind of talking beforehand and you were talking a little bit about, you know, some of your struggles around that. But I, what I'm seeing from the outside is how natural you are on TikTok to talk to an audience, uh, to connect with them and to come up with this like fresh material that's super exciting. And this is how you've gotten, you know, over a million followers over there. So talk to me about how your journey uh, with that. OK, so in the beginning, you started, you know, you, you did a couple of bringer shows. You don't like it. So then from then on out, like how did you kind of grow with your ability to connect with an audience? Until you got to TikTok, <laughs> I just went on stage. I just, I just, I just went on stage. There was, I didn't have any vision, uh, and that may have been my problem. My, my whole goal is to just be on stage and to be like an act. Like those yes. are the two things that I want to do. So I just like doing those two things. I don't. I'm not. I don't. I, I learned very on that one set doesn't do anything. Like you're not going to get discovered off of one one good set yes um at the same time one bad set it, it might hurt might hurt a lot might have to run <laughs> home through the tears but but it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna destroy you um so i'm just like always trying to to find i love the process of comedy like i love the artist i like i love how every comic thinks so differently Mm. But I, I I think that like there's a really fascinating thing about comedy to me that that I I really latch on to about how how you your your job is to go on stage and to talk to strangers, but there's a great aspect about that because as much as I don't know the audience, the audience also doesn't know the audience. Mm. So you got people from all walks of life, 
all different age groups, all different ethnicities, all different ideas in their head, and you have to make them agree on something. That's what mm. you're doing. I'm making them agree that the thing that I said, a person that they don't know either, is funny to all of them. So to do that, you need to know how people think. And you need to know why people think the way they think. And that, and so doing comedy just keeps me as a person that can accept everything. Mm. Not like not not like everything. I don't have to like everything or agree with everything, but I can accept it. And if I can follow that line on to on to back to the why, it there's the whys aren't that different. Like if you can follow the why back to its origin, for most people, the whys are not that different. Mm. Like if you, if you look at a person who's like, you can look at a person and be like, oh, that's a bad person. But if you follow the why all the way back to the beginning, you'll realize that they don't see themselves as a bad person. So, oh my God, yes. So, so, so if you, they don't see themselves as a bad person and they see themselves as a good person, then they want to be good. They just have a different version of good. So if you can follow that back, you can find out where it started from and you can make them laugh on an, like an individual level as a group. And so yes. like stuff like that is like the funnest part for me about comedy. Oh my God, I couldn't agree more. And it's funny that you mentioned that because it when I went to acting school, that is essentially how you learn to play a bitch, like, you know, as a woman, you know what I mean? So even though you, so you don't want to play it as a bitch, you want to play it as somebody who's had this experience and this experience and this experience, and that is why they're coming across as a bitch. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. it's like, and people feel, you know, it's like, oh, when I can justify why I act the way that I act, you know what I mean? Like if I'm a queen in a movie and it's like, well, they say that queens are or uh, or the villain, you know what I mean? Like the villain that's like a, like an evil step queen. You know what I mean? It's like because they were the princess that never got saved. And it's like if you can hear that, right, that's like, oh, this is why this person is acting this way. So yeah. it sounds to me like you kind of you're talking about like the humanity of it. You know what I mean? The humanity of well, dealing with humans. Well, I mean. I love people. I haven't always, but I love people. <laughs> but but just because like I'm fascinated in how in how different we are. Like like I think that people get a lot of like hung up on one thing about people. Mm. When I get hung up on the uh, maybe I might get hung up on one thing, but it'll be a completely different thing. Like 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 you know how uh, Bill Cosby did some fuck shit. Like he did some stuff that probably bad. Maybe don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, actually, not maybe. Just don't. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? like he did a couple things that was uh, nah, bro. But but that in my head, that doesn't mean he's less funny. So mm. I'm I'm that dude that can look at something and I can. I've always been really good. I got teased a lot, which made me be able to compartmentalize really well. And so I can compartmentalize really really well so i can be like i had a joke that i used to tell i was like yeah osama bin laden was a bad dude but maybe he was dope as shit at madden you know what i mean like people can be more than one thing and, and that's why i'm always looking at so i can take uh something away from somebody who other people would have just wrote off there's a comedian at the store and i can always tell who who is going to not who's going to make it as a comedian, but who has that spark, that way of being able mm. like I can argue any point from any side. Logic. Mm. I and the people who like like it's his name is Boom Shakalaka. He's a he's a homeless. Uh, oh, I, I know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so when Boom goes on, there's so many comedians who talk shit about him because he might be doing the same jokes, or he might be in drag, or he might be doing some crazy shit, but. Those are the comedians I'm like, you don't see because the crowd's laughing like y'all. You you think you're thinking of it. At, you're looking at it like how you look at it, but you're not looking at it how the crowd's looking at it because the crowd is laughing. What he's doing is effective. Now, why is what he's doing effect? That's where I go. So like, or, or you know, or, or, or somebody who's like doing something that's like really weird or off. And only some people are chuckling. I was like, yeah, but you don't understand how much commitment it takes to do. Like, I, I can always pick up something mm. to take from from the situation and uh and i love looking for that thing 
Mm. I think that's so amazing. And I think this is why you do connect with an audience. And this is why I also love talking to comedians, because what comedians do on stage is the same exact thing that we need to do when we're connecting with an audience online. It's the same exact process. You know what I mean? It's like you're connecting with them, whatever that is, you know, finding the universality of something, how, like just talking about it. But I feel like what's so difficult is I feel like sometimes people see the promotional aspect of it and they have a hard time making that jump, that it is the same process where it's like I'm connecting with an audience. And it sounds to me like you've really found that. And I feel, really see that in the content that you're creating. You know what I mean? And I think that that's why people are attracted to your to your TikToks and to your channel and to your comedy and and why they want to follow you. I mean, well, with TikTok, I kind of look at it like I, I with, with social media, with pretty much anything and social media, it, it's a little different because it can be hyper focused. Um, but it's to me, when I look at the people who are all like big on social media, it's because they just they just do what they like unapologetically. Mm, it, yes it, it, it's as simple as that people are like how do i get more followers i was like stop caring about the followers like yes like just you want more followers do something that you like to do i will listen to somebody talk about something they love for hours even if i don't like that thing like if you if you want to talk about uh like the making of water balloons but you're <laughs> like that's your thing you know what i mean like you love love that I'll listen to you talk for hours because you're going to, you, you have not only pat information, but passion. And there's, 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 you know, there's 8 billion, almost 8 billion people in the world, six or seven of them are online. So there's going to be like, it's, it's the, <laughs> I, I, I use this as an example in a paper I wrote for college. I was like, it's like, you go in line, you can find a thousand people who believe being racist is the link. Like that's the thing to do. You know what I mean? Like everybody should be racist in these streets. You can find a thousand people who believe that easily because you're, you're in a pool of 10 million. Like you're in a, you know what I mean? Like, so that's not a big, that's not a big number. Yeah. And you're looking at, you know, so, so I'm like, that's the same thing with way people with like your thing. So if your hobby is just to draw cats, there's millions of people who love people who draw cats. So <laughs> stop trying to figure out how to how to like draw the cats that people like. No, nah, just draw the cats that you like and let the people come to you. Yeah. And every single every person online who does that, all the girls who dance, and then people are like, I don't understand why she's got 150 million likes. I was like, but you don't understand that she has a hundred and fifty million likes. There's 150 million people who like that video. That's because she was doing what she wanted to do. Stop hating on the video and just go do what you want to do. Stop asking for the, you're, you're asking for people to like you. That's mm. that people don't like that. Yes. So just, just, just do you fam. I say it all the time. Just do you. Oh my God. I, 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 I've done this show a while and I feel like that description was so like the most boiled down description of that. And I feel like what you're talking about is a very, very slight shift in perspective, perspective, right? Where it's totally like, instead of looking out, look in, right? Yeah. And so it's like, and, and it's, it's true. We do talk a lot about on the show about like, doing authentically you and i'm so tired of the word authentic i could fucking blow my fucking brains out but it is truly is you know what i mean like it's almost like handcrafted and artisanal like i want to get we're rid of the word authentic you know what i mean it's like so oversaid but yeah what you're saying is like in in finding in doing what you do and then you don't feel gross because you're not trying to like whore yourself out to an audience that you don't fucking care about yeah, just do you like if if the piece there's no version of life where everybody likes you. It's just that yes. it doesn't exist. Ever. Yes. It, 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 it will not exist. Like, you know what I mean? You know, I, there was one of my favorite lines from a movie. I can't even remember the movie, but it was like this old time movie, like like 13th century, some shit like that with kings and, <laughs> and princes and stuff like that. And, and, it, and it, it was a it was a like a like a king or like a, a, a talking to like a squire, like a, like a, a stable boy. And he was like, hey, man, how do, you, how do you, I mean, he didn't say, hey, man, but like he was, he was like, hey, 
So how do you do your job? Like, how do you do this? I'm in the castle kicking it. You know what I mean? Like, and you shovel shit like all day, all the live long. How do you do that? And the dude just kind of looks at him. He's like, sometimes I do what I want to do. Other times I do what I have to. And like, that's that's the realest shit I've ever heard. Like, that's just real. Like, hey, sometimes you do what you want to do. Sometimes you do what you have to. Yes. And sometimes the thing you have to do is just so you can do the thing you want to do. Yes. Too many people want to start at the finish line. I'm like, nah, bro. Yes. Finish line doesn't mean anything if you didn't run the race. Yes. Take him to church, Nate. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I yes, and I feel like um yeah, I, I, uh, people really struggle with process. They struggle with how long it takes. They're judging it every step of the way. And I think that that's because that missing component is when you're not doing what you love, you're uncomfortable. So if you're on, yeah. if you're doing something that's, you're fucking uncomfortable with, how the fuck are you going to click in with this? If you're, if you hate this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when I, you know, at, w- with my company, people come to me all the time and I have these like consultation calls where I talk to them for free. And most of the time I'm just trying to figure out whether or not we're a match. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't want to be forcing anybody into doing this shit and promoting yourself online and promoting this stuff comes with a lot of baggage. People also bring a lot of baggage to the fucking table. And I want to make sure that I'm not trying to fucking, you know, climb an uphill battle with somebody. Like, are you willing to, like, figure this out? Whatever this is for you. Like, let's be on this journey together so we can figure this out for you. But when people come to me and tell me how much they hate social media, but then they want a large audience, and I'm like, how how, how do those two things, how, yeah. how can you talk about how much you fucking hate this, but then you want a return on your investment? You know what I mean? It's like, your your feelings around it do kind of change how it is so it's like it is reflecting back at you how you feel so if you're putting something out there that you love doing and it really truly can be doing anything like you said like i fucking make dope water balloons this is my fucking water kingdom you know know it can be anything Underwater basket weaving. Is what I'm saying. Like, I would watch that at least once. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, there's so many. Th- there's, there's videos that I've seen of just somebody crushing, like, like a tomato. In the yes. It's got two million views. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I don't understand. Stop trying. Stop trying to make the damn thing perfect and just put it out. <laughs> Just put it out, dog. Nobody, nobody cares. If it's <laughs> terrible, they'll talk about it for like a week or like an hour. Like the, like it's nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, cares. I've I've seen those videos too, where it's like it's that pressure thing comes down, and it's like yeah. play doh, and it's like yeah. <laughs> a can no. of coke. It's toothpaste. It's like oh my god, I'll watch. I'm totally yeah, like wow. What the, what the fuck is this? <laughs> nobody cares. People have this idea that they're gonna be like that they can't come back from anything. I'm like, yes. so what? So yeah. what? Like everybody can come back. It might even be, it's irritating how much, how easy it is to come back. Like people are like, oh man, cancel cultures. But can't, comics have not been getting canceled. Every comedian that someone has tried to cancel is still touring. Roseanne, mm-hmm. still touring. Louis C.K., still touring. Kevin Hart, still touring. Bill Burr, still touring. Dave Chappelle still touring like it does Joey Diaz there's not a comic that will stop touring because there's always going to be somebody who thinks he's funny mm. it, it, Bill Cosby could come right out today and and headline Madison Square Garden and sell it out oh what yikes it wouldn't, it, wouldn't even be a, it wouldn't even be a problem and and what what that is is is, is now is that good or bad it's not what it's whatever but it is what would happen Yes. Uh, and I, I understand what, what you're happen. saying. I understand so, what you're like, saying. People have this idea that like, I don't want to do something that people aren't going to like. There's always, the, there's always going to be people who don't like it. Always. 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 Yeah. I, uh, I did, a, um, I did, I had one TikTok go like, you know, baby mini viral, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I got like almost 200,000 views, which is big for me. Like, I, I don't have like a ton of, I, I had like, I think, 
under a thousand followers when it happened. So I was like, how is this clicking in? You know, this is super cool. And a lot, and I did get a lot of people having some judgments based around it and a lot of, and some negative reaction. And it was very interesting because it was like, and I kept on talking about it with my wife and I'm like, they're missing the point. And I, it was like, I could have gone on there to every comment and like explained it like you are missing the point. But it's just totally like, I don't have to do it. I don't have to fucking keep up with every single fucking person and no. make sure that they completely fucking understand everything that I'm fucking saying. So for you, um, do you feel how do you feel like when people misunderstand maybe what you're doing or they pass judgment on you personally, your appearance or whatever? Like, as I know that you have had, you know, people come at you in a certain way. How do you how do you deal with that? Like, I mean, when it first started, are you better with it now or? It, I, I, I mean, I, it first started when I was about two, you know what I mean? Like, so, so uh. Yeah, I've looked like this for a many minutes. So it, this isn't nothing, nothing that anybody says online is going to like, I don't even know you and yes. you're not funny. And I've heard the thing that you've been, you're saying for decades, like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I don't like, it's not, it's not even worth my time to respond. Like, it's not doing anything. That thing that you said doesn't, it's not doing anything. Me responding to you isn't giving me anything. I get nothing out of it. Yes. Why would I respond to you? And I mean, when I say I mean I get nothing out of it, I literally get nothing out of it. I I even know that the people that are doing it, I've even, I can even like just because I know people, I'd say ninety percent of the of the people that say something like, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, like you're not white or uh, or can I say the n word? Something like that. Ninety percent of them are under sixteen. Yes. Like, so I'm so like, because adults don't typically ask me those questions. Mm. That's not to say that adults haven't asked me that those questions. It's just that typically that doesn't come from adult people. It usually doesn't come from kids in the city either. It's usually uh, white males ages eight to about 17 years old who live in the suburbs from uh, in uh not in, in who are upper to like like middle class to middle upper class who have two working parents and they have a lot of free time those are 90 percent of the trolls at least for me but it's because they're fucking lonely nobody yes. happy is a troll. there's no happy trolls yes you know I'm that's why it's like you know a troll is just like a, a kid trying to get attention from mom because mommy's not paying attention. So they don't, so they break a vase because even negative attention is attention. So I'm petty. So I like not saying anything to them. And, and, and then they don't get anything out of their troll. Number one, my fans will say something to them and my fans have figured out that I don't say nothing to them. So they will leave them alone. So they don't get anything from the troll. And then they just see how everybody else is having fun and ignoring them. And I love the fact that they're sadder now. So, you know what I mean? Like, so the trolls don't really do anything to me. They just let me know how big I'm getting. The bigger I get, the more I'll get. So I'm every time, like, you know what I mean? Like, so the more I get, I'm like, oh, okay. Like the other day, somebody accused me of stealing a joke. Mm. And well, they said I was stealing a joke. It was a tag, but I hadn't stolen it. Um, obviously, but, uh, but, uh, I, there was a little part of me that was like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like that, 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 that's, that's means that people who don't know anything about me are seeing me. Mm. That's what that means. And that's, uh, and considering I have a million peak followers, if there's still people out there who haven't seen me. I don't care that they, that he judged me right away. It doesn't bother me. I don't. It says more about him than it says about me. He didn't ask me if I did. He didn't mm. ask me. He didn't ask for clarification. And I don't feel the need to uh, explain myself to anybody. If you get the wrong idea, that's on you. Ask me. I, I, have, I will always talk to somebody. If you ask me, hey, what did you mean by this? Mm. I'll, I'll talk to you about it. I've, I've I've sat down and talked to fans after shows and got drink with them because they had a problem with the joke. If you come to me respectfully, I have no problem talking to you. You're still mm. wrong in my opinion, but I have no problem talking to you. I want to know about your life. I want to know why you think what you think. 
But if you just come and try and attack me, I'll just walk the fuck off. I don't need to explain myself. And I have no problem with you having the wrong idea. I love that you said that so much. And I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like, uh, and I've said this many times on the show, you know, and I, and I do ask people about this a lot. Every single guest I've had on here, I ask about that component because I feel like, because I do want people to hear this because this is a part of why I want to normalize these conversations about what it's like to be in front of an audience because it is the good, bad, and the ugly. It's like a component that we have to do to continue our careers, um, you know, especially in entertainment. Uh, but it is something that it does come with this tiny little sliver of a price, you know what I mean? Which means then you're open for judgment. People make judgments, uh, you know, and that's everybody across the board. E appearance Ooh. is so easy to fucking clip somebody because of like your weight, your hair, how you look, da da da, da like whatever, those, that fucking bullshit. And then what you're saying, what you're doing, how you didn't completely weren't as specific as you could have been. Like, it's just like so fucking crazy, right? Yeah. But I do feel like almost what the, the pain that I, and the reason why I do this and why it's painful for me is that that tiny little aspect of it, people are so afraid of it that they are willing to just forget about the rest of it because they don't want to deal with that one minor part of it. And it's like, it, it's so great to hear the, the like the, how you connected with it. It's like, oh, okay, no, I think this is like the people that, that do this. This is, these are the trolls that I experience and why they are. And it almost sounds like, again, you have this kind of like thread through it, which is about you see the humanity in it. And... By I mean, not engaging with negativity, um, it helps you because whatever you focus on gets bigger, right? So when you focus on the negativity, it's going to fucking get bigger. It's going to work the hell it works. It, that's exactly like it, there's no. I think people I think that sometimes people can look at. social media and they have this idea like here's the thing just because i don't talk about thing like negative things doesn't mean i don't see them mm. it's just that i'm not going to talk about something unless i'm also going to bring i'm not going to i don't want to i don't want to do something just to bring you down i'm also going to give you if i'm going to say something that i also want there to be like like you know those people that you say hey i want to buy a boat and they're like, man, you can't buy no boat, man. You ain't got no money. That's the first thing that they say. Mm. Like, I don't, that's not me. He's like, man, I want to buy a boat. I was like, you want to buy a boat? Let's go buy a boat. Which one? What, what first thing we got to do is we got to get out some money. How, how are we going to get some money? Like, I'm already looking for a solution to the problem. I'm not all automatically thinking of reasons why you can't do it. And I treat myself like that too. Like, and so, so I'm not worried about the outcome of the thing. I'm not trying to predict it. I'm just trying to do the thing that I want. I want to tell this joke is funny as hell to me. So I'm going to tell this joke. Nobody laughed. Okay. They didn't understand. I didn't connect to them. Maybe I just don't know how to connect this joke to those people, but the joke is still funny to me. Mm. And I think that some people could get that, that in their head that, Oh, if people didn't laugh, then it wasn't funny. No, it was. It only has to be fun. Only one person have to laugh. And if you laugh, then it's funny. It just might not be relatably funny, but that's fine. I I couldn't agree more. And I um I also know too that like uh, when I'm talking to people about how to present this the the challenges that we face online, and you know. Um, and so much a part of like even like the current climate, you know, it's very difficult to miss. I mean, God, I mean, there's, you know, uh, every day a crazy news cycle that we are constantly battling against. You know what I mean? And um, and people being sucked into those conversations in a negative way. And I'm always like. I refuse to kind of like focus on like the negative thing, but it's like, here, here's how you can like donate to make it better. Like you can't just, you can't just drop this information and fuck everybody up. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, how can we actually like turn this into something that's either productive or like, here's the links to fucking donate, or here's more information about how to know more about this or whatever. So it's like, you're adding to the conversation in a positive way. And I find that like, people don't even want to like, people are like, I, you know, I'm not going to be over on this social media platform because everyone's talking so, you know, crazy over there. And I'm just totally like, I get it. But like, 
you know, in comedy, we use a microphone. It's like we're not mad at microphones because people say fucking racist fucked up shit into them. Do you know what I mean? It's like the microphone is just there to amplify the words. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like uh, I, I've always like. It, it's to me, I, I try not. I don't I don't watch a lot of the you know, I'm not I'm not political at all. I don't care. I, I just don't care. Um, yeah. So what that means, though, is that I'm not going to get sit here and get mad at the opinion. I think that what a lot of people what happens a lot of the time is people. My the job as a comedian is to travel, is to travel and talk to people. So when I see people talking online and then I see people in the streets and at the shows, they don't match up. People have this idea that, man, like online, if you just looked online, the same thing that happened in the 50s happens today. Like yes. people think that we've 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 gotten better. So yeah. and we have. But but when and when I, what I mean by that is that if your perception is that black people are violent or latino people are slow at track or ch- japanese people can't run fat you know what i mean like if that's the perception and then you see that online you're also going to pick up that perception so if the perception you have about if, if you're seeing a bunch of negative shit online then your perception is the world's negative and it's not but you haven't been out there so now you go out into the world and you're looking for negativity you're hoping to find negativity so it can validate your thoughts and what you already think is because you saw it online first. So now it's innocent. Till, it's now, you know, guilty till proven innocent. But you're using that to judge the world. I don't do that. And I don't think that that's a very healthy thing because you're taking opinions of people that you've never met, never will meet. The motherfucker works at, at Walmart <laughs> in Duluth, Minnesota. Why are you taking his political opinion? LeBron James doesn't know shit about Sprint phones. Why are you taking his opinion on Sprint phones? Why are you mad at me for making a a, a joke about whether a joke about the right or wrong time to to smack women? Are you like who's saying you know what that comedian that I saw one time said that smacking women at this time is the correct thing to do? Why are you mad? Do you really think that that's how brains work? Because it's not. <laughs> Like that's not how brains work. Like you, you thinking that I'm gay doesn't make me gay. That's not how. That's <laughs> not how things work. That's why I never understood when people are like no homo or sus. I'm like, dude, you complimented my shirt. I don't want to suck your dick. Like that's <laughs> not. That's not how that. That's not how that works, fam. You gonna have to do more if you want that. You know what I mean? So, so <laughs> I try not to get too caught up on it because I know that most of it is actually false. I've been around the country as a black albino adopted at birth by a white family and raised in the South in poor ass neighborhoods. I, I, I have, I'm not even the only adopt. So I, there's, I have a perspective that not a lot of people have. And that perspective has like, as a kid sucked, but I was never invited to any group. No group ever came to my defense when I was being jumped. Black mm. people didn't come to my defense. White people didn't come to my defense. So I started to recognize, oh, it was individuals that came to my defense. So all the group is bullshit. It's just people are individuals. I can't say that this group does this or this group does this because I haven't met it. I haven't even met one percent of the group that I'm judging, regardless of the reason. So that makes it much easier to just be like, oh, I'll just take people for who they are. Yes. I don't, do that. I don't think a lot of people want to do that because it's dangerous. Or they yes. Speak. No, I, I, I can hear it sounds to me like where this came from, you know, for you, this this uh, this ability to connect with people, um, you know, and it, it sounds to me like and I could be wrong. It comes from this, you know, this trauma you experience and whether it's to greater or lesser degree. I know people overuse the word, but it's like when you have an experience, it does. Uh, That is a challenge. You can it it, like I always say the hot water can make you uh, soft like the potato or it can make you hard like the egg. You know what I mean? Where it's like hot water can do one or the other thing for you. It could have turned you into a fucking like super pissed off, angry, whatever. But it sounds to me like it did. (laughs) Oh, it did. One hundred percent did. But it sounds to me like uh, that you have found 
uh, uh, like a way for that to come through because it sounds to me like at the end of the day, and believe me, I, I have that too. I, you know, I was, my ex-girlfriend shot me and it made me very angry and bitter. As, as it does, you know. <laughs> and um, it's been a very long time, uh, but I also feel like it gets very tiring to, to maintain the anger and the bitterness and the rage and... It is. It takes so much energy to be mad. Like, yeah, it, it really does. Yeah, and I feel like now when I'm connecting with people, and I have the same experience as well, where it's like you know I'm a I'm a queer woman online. I'm you know I'm I, I I'm a lot. I'm not for everybody. I you know what I mean. And it's like so I I get that, but I also know too like what you were saying, like how I experience people online, and then I meet them in person, and I'm like, oh, this is just that guy or that girl, and. Even in, even in my last episode with Margaret Cho, because she was talking about how like people would come for her and troll her pretty hard. You know what I mean? And for being who she is, you know what I mean? And um, and she 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 said that she had these people that would come to her to, like they, they were kind of like Internet people that would come to her defense and they would be like, here's all the information about that person. And she would find out that they like worked at a smoke shop in like Indiana. Like she was like, why would I like yeah, who cares what? about this person? There isn't anybody who's not like there isn't there. Like, there's no person. There are people who hate Keanu Reeves. You know what I'm saying? Like that. How? How? How do you hate that? You know what I'm saying? Like there are people. There's there, there. There's people who hate the Dalai Lama. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like you're not like nobody. You, you, you think people? Everybody's gonna like you? No, no. There are people who hate. Like I, if there were there, look how many people hate. God, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even religious. And there are people who want to murder God. Like, so you think that really you, Bridget, in fucking South Carolina, you're not going to get no hate? Like, really? Like, really? Come on. Let's let's be let's, let's be real. People hate Keanu Reeves. Nobody's safe. So. <laughs> That is such a fantastic point. And on that point, we are going to hop on over uh, to my Patreon. We're going to keep this conversation going with Nate. And I'm going to ask him about the best and the worst thing that's ever happened to him uh, okay. online because I know he's got a fantastic story or a perspective uh, to hear about that. So, you guys, if you want more information about Nate, you can get him at uh, NathanHerdComedy.com. And you can also, it's Albino Rhino, right? Where people can find you as well at uh. Albino. Uh, it's just Nathan Hurt. I, most of the things are Al Albino Rano is my merch store. Oh, okay, got uh, it. Understood. But everything, yeah, everything else is just Nathan Hurt comedy. Nathan Hurd comedy, great. Please follow him on TikTok. He's super amazing. His his TikToks are hilarious. Well, thank uh, you. And you can see him on American Horror Story and also uh, Marvel's Legion. If you want to know more about me, my stand-up comedy, my comedy special, my movies, you can get me at MelanieVessi.com. But if you want to know more about my business, who I work with, what I do, uh, PromotionalRescue.com. So we're going to hop on over to my Patreon and we'll see you over there. Bye.